They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! Okay, guys, I am sorry this video is a little bit later than usual. I know I like to drop the premieres for everyone early in the morning. That way, we don't necessarily go and just do, do whatever, leave the house, whatever it is, and y'all are able to actually come out and hang out with me during the premieres live. But I was camping yesterday, so I just now got back just in time to make this video. So yeah, it's going to come out a little bit later. The premieres should be going to continue to go up at about 9 a.m. going forward. So I'm sorry that today's late, but it should be a one-time thing. And other than that, all I have to say is thank you for all the support on the channel as of late, guys. I mean, y'all have continued to kill it. And I'm going to continue to bring y'all a video every single day until we get done with our fantasy basketball playoffs. And let's dive into these bold predictions that we are going to have for the second half of the fantasy basketball season. And our first one that we are going to bring up is Jamal Murray is straight up looking like a league winner. Okay, so I understand this is probably going to be frustrating for a lot of people because... Coming into the year, I did not like Jamal Murray. Coming into the year, I said that Jamal Murray was a player that, yes, was dominant in the bubble. Yes, looked fantastic when everybody was watching him. But if we looked at the larger sample of his NBA career, we really didn't like what we saw. And we really didn't like the fact that Jamal Murray was not going to profile to be a guy that was going to be racking up a ton of assists and rebounds. We went, you know what? This is going to be a high volume score, but outside of that, the usage is mainly going to be coming from Nikola Jokic. That's why we love Nikola Jokic coming into the year. And Jamal Murray is pretty much going to be like Devin Booker. Jamal Murray is going to be Devin Booker. The only difference is Devin Booker, we've seen it over a very long period of time, so we can say it's a safe asset. Where with Murray, I mean, I was wrong. If we look at what he has done over the past 30 days, if we look at what he has done over the past 13 games, I mean, right now he's averaging 36 minutes a game during this stretch. The efficiency is through the roof. I think we can safely say that Jamal Murray is a much better asset in category formats rather than in point league formats because right now, I mean, very rarely are you ever going to see this type of efficiency from a guard where Jamal Murray is putting up 18 field goal attempts a game and nine and a half of them are going in. This is good for a 53% field goal percentage during the past month. And on top of that, you go to what he is providing you from the free throw line. And no, I mean, he's not one of these players that's gonna be attacking the basket so often. He's making eight, nine, 10 trips to the free throw line a game but he's getting there four times a game and he's making them pretty much 95% of the time. So for those category leagues, he's a solid asset there. And also for these points formats, he has also come through with way more production than I was expecting. And this is because we go and we go, okay, Jamal Murray, 26 and a half points over the past 30 games. So that's not something that's gonna be very surprising, but what is surprising is the fact that Jamal Murray is averaging 3.7 three-pointers made a game over the past 30 days and close to four and a half rebounds and five assists. Now, with Nikola Jokic pretty much dominating touches in this rotation, I wasn't expecting the assist number to be so high for Jamal Murray, but we can come out here and we can say, hey, it looks like we were wrong. It looks like Denver is going to be pushing everything they have into Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray's arms for them to try to drag this team through the NBA playoffs. Hopefully they can play spoiler. Hopefully we get Michael Porter Jr. looking a little bit better than he has over the past month. But right now Jamal Murray looks like he could be a league winner. All right, so now our next bold prediction is going to be disgusting, but I have to say it. I think here what we are going to see is Kelly Oubre continue to take a leap towards the fantasy basketball playoffs. And with Kelly Oubre, I know, I, I mean, if you looked at the first month of the year, it looked like he may have been the worst player in the NBA. If you looked at his efficiency, especially from beyond the arc, I mean, Kelly Oubre was hilariously bad. But I think right now, a lot of people still have that nasty taste that Kelly Oubre left from the very beginning of the season. 
And they really haven't had the opportunity to go, you know what? Kelly Oubre looks like he is turning it around. He looks like he is finally fitting well in this rotation with Steph Curry. He's kind of falling into his role and possibly he's someone that can come out and can continue to perform, not at a high level, but at a level that should be making him an impact player for you. And we know that this is probably something that we should have, I don't want to say expected, but we should have given him a little bit of a longer leash at the very beginning of the year because Ubre, yes, he was making the transition to a new team. And on top of that, with Ubre, he really had no experience playing with Steph Curry. He had no experience playing with Draymond Green. But now that he's been able to mesh with these other players in the rotation, I mean, he's been looking a lot better. And he's averaging 34 minutes a game over the past 30 days. And you go up and look at his 19 and a half points, six and a half rebounds, and he's averaging some decent defensive statistics with a steal and a half and half a block a game. And with Kelly Oubre, also someone that because he plays a little bit more off ball, because he's not going to be stacking up a ton of assists, he's also not going to be stacking up turnovers. So we know that's always an underrated thing when we're trying to look at those players that may not be superstars, but just impactful enough to be making your lineup. All right, so now let's keep it with Golden State and let's go over to a player that I want to make an impact, but I don't think he's going to. James Wiseman, I think at this point it is safe to assume that he is not going to be beneficial for anybody in a regular or a shallow fantasy basketball format in 2021. Now, yes, he has so much potential. I do not need Warriors fans coming at me for saying, oh, but Mason, how do you hate Wiseman? How are you not seeing that he is taking steps forward? And yeah, Wiseman, he has his flashes. He has some moments where he looks good, but the problem is he just isn't seeing enough minutes in the rotation. The problem is he's playing on a team that is still trying to be competitive this year, and he himself is not ready to make that difference. He's not ready to make an impact for the Golden State Warriors. He's only averaging like 20 minutes a game recently. So I think here with Wiseman, it's going to be hard to see him even if he decides to kind of put it together and decides to bump up his efficiency per minute. I just don't know if he's going to be getting the minutes per game for him to make an impact. All right, so let's go over to a different rookie, someone who I think is going to be making an impact, someone I think is turning it around. This is going to be Anthony Edwards, player with the dunk of the year. I understand that, but what's more important to look at is with Anthony Edwards, he is now seeing a ridiculous amount of minutes per game. If you look over the past 30 days, Anthony Edwards is averaging up to 36 minutes per game. We know he's extremely young. We know this is a player that doesn't necessarily have a ton of basketball experience under his belt. We don't even know if he likes basketball. But what we are seeing is we are seeing that this new coaching staff, this team that is playing for nothing this year, that they are just trying to hopefully get a top three pick so it doesn't get sent to the Warriors. They are trying to develop what they can with Anthony Edwards. They are trying to get him as much action as possible to make sure that he gets these growing pains out of the way. I love the idea of what they're doing with Edwards right now, just plugging him in and having him figure it out in real time because these games don't mean anything for the Timberwolves. And I'll say with Edwards, because he is going to have those growing pains, because the volume should be high, the efficiency should be very low, we understand that this is the perfect Russell Russell Westbrook example where this is a player that's going to be much better for those point league formats rather than a category league. So if you're playing in a category league, I do not think Anthony Edwards is going to be a priority add for you. But if you're playing in a points league, I think he can make a difference. All right, so now let's go to our next bold prediction, which is going to be in Oklahoma City, a player that right now you're kind of having to hear Oklahoma go, okay, what is our long-term plan here? Are we giving them the max? Shea Gilders Alexander, who, in my opinion, they need to be giving him the max contract. I will say that right out of the gate. I understand that means nothing for fantasy basketball, but for any Oklahoma City Thunder fan, guys, I, I love the Thunder whenever they had KD because obviously KD's my boy from going to UT, but we can be real here. Oklahoma isn't necessarily the number one free agent destination, so they need to be giving Shea that max extension. 
But anyway, here with Shea, my prediction is going to be that he takes another leap. I mean, if you were just looking at the linear progress from Shea Gilgis Alexander since his rookie season, he continues to get better in every area of the game. I mean, he is someone that has been extremely impressive. I think criminally underrated as well. I know a lot of people want to say, hey, it's these men-level veterans around Oklahoma that aren't letting them tank, that are having them win too many games to guarantee that high pick that they need. What I think is happening is I think it's way, 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 way too many people are overlooking the massive impact that Shea is having on this roster and this season. I think that he is already one of the best assets in fantasy basketball, but I think he is going to only continue to get better from here because, what is he, like 22 years old? And on top of that, he's playing on a team that there are not a ton of guys screaming that they need shots. Shea is pretty much going to be the focal point of the offense, and we know that for a guarantee. Okay, so let's go to our last bold prediction here. And I know people are not going to like to hear this. I don't even really like to say it. But it's going to be James Harden takes a step back with what he has provided you over the past 30 days. Right now, over the past 30 days, James Harden has been that elite fantasy asset that you drafted him to be. Now, he was my number one player overall coming into the season. And over the past 30 games, he has been the number two player in value over replacement. But obviously, this has been without Kevin Durant. And what we can say with Harden is going, okay, you know what? If KD comes back, realistically, what is KD going to be taking away? And we go, okay, Kevin Durant, not necessarily going to be taking away too many shots, in my opinion. I think KD will probably take away some field goal attempts from James Harden, but the defensive attention that KD is going to draw will offset that difference in that if James Harden is taking a few less shots, those shots should be going in at a higher clip. So I don't necessarily think that's going to make a difference. But where we go over is we go, okay, James Harden somehow over the past 30 days is averaging 10 rebounds a game. Now, that is something that can't keep up. That is something that is going to regress. I think that number is probably going to come down closer to six or seven just because there's no way the math checks out that this team continues to add bigs. And if they bring Kevin Durant in, I don't think they're asking James Harden to play 37 minutes a game at the same time. This just seems like a very, very risky workload to give James Harden in a season where you're just playing back to back to back to back. And this is a team that wants to make the NBA Finals. So I think that Harden is going to continue to play games because Steve Nash and this coaching staff need to figure out what personnel they're going to have and how the big three mesh together. But I think the minutes should go down as well as the rebounds per minute. So that's going to lead to a drop in field goal attempts, as well as a big drop in rebounds. Now, thank you guys. I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. I really hope y'all got something from it. Now, if you did, please, please, please go down there, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. And if you didn't enjoy the video, go down to the comment section. Let me know. Let me know what I did wrong. Let me know why I'm stupid. And if you just do it in a way that is not necessarily being an ass about it, but actually trying to be constructive. Hopefully I learned something from you and I would love to see that.